when a man carries a ladder on his shoulder he holds the ladder in such a way that the middle part of the ladder lies on his shoulder do you know why you will get this justification in today's lesson dear students tusi rotational motion naal waqif ho aj assi is naal sambandhit ek hor topic center of gravity bare janange aao pehla aj de learning objectives te nazar maar laiye on completion of this topic learners will be able to describe angular momentum discuss physical meaning of angular momentum describe center of gravity discuss law of conservation of angular momentum and its applications angular momentum is an important concept in physics with numerous applications it can be used to describe the overall rotational state of a physical system angular momentum in general the turning movement of a particle about the axis of rotation is called the angular momentum of the particle angular momentum is also known as moment of momentum and can be measured as the product of the linear momentum and the perpendicular distance of its line of action from the axis of rotation it is denoted by l the si unit of angular momentum is kilogram meter square per second and the dimensional formula of angular momentum is m1 l2 t minus 1 let us now derive a mathematical expression for measuring angular momentum consider that a particle of mass m lies in xy plane at a point p whose position vector is vector r such that op makes an angle theta with respect to the x axis let vector p be the linear momentum of the particle suppose that the particle can rotate about an axis passing through the point o as well as perpendicular to xy plane then angular momentum of the particle about an axis passing through the point o is vector l equal to vector r cross vector p which implies vector l is equal to the modulus of vector r into modulus of vector p into sin phi into unit vector n here phi is the angle between the p and r while unit vector n is normal to the plane containing vectors r and p on taking the modulus on both sides of equation we get l equal to rp sin phi here r sin phi is equal to on which is equal to d this implies l is equal to pd here d is the perpendicular distance of the line of action of linear momentum p from the axis of rotation thus we have angular momentum equal to linear momentum into perpendicular distance from axis of rotation the angular momentum is taken as positive if it tends to rotate in anti clockwise direction and as negative if it tends to rotate in clockwise direction since angular momentum is a vector quantity we can resolve it into components in various directions the linear momentum vector p can be resolved into components pr p theta in the direction of increase of vector r and theta respectively here pr p theta are called radial component and transverse components respectively of the linear momentum p it follows 
that P r is equal to P cos phi and P theta is equal to P sin phi. As we know that the angular momentum of a rotating body in magnitude form is L equal to R p sin phi or L is equal to R p theta. Hence, it can be concluded that angular momentum is equal to transverse component of linear momentum into distance from axis of rotation. Let us now try to understand the physical meaning of angular momentum. When a planet moves around the sun, then the infinite number of particles constituting the planet rotate in xy plane about z axis. Due to rotational motion, the planet experienced a torque due to the sun. If no external torque acts on the planet, the planet poses constant magnitude of angular momentum which leads to the constant aerial velocity of the planet, amounting to mean that the line joining the planet to the sun sweeps out equal areas in equal intervals of time. Let us now derive this concept mathematically. Suppose that at any instant the particle is at the point A whose position vector is vector OA equal to vector R after a small time interval delta T. It reaches the point B whose position vector is vector R plus delta vector R. Therefore, the displacement of the particle is given by vector AB is equal to vector R plus delta vector R minus vector R which is equal to delta vector R. If vector V is velocity of particle at the point A, then the small displacement covered in time delta t may be expressed as delta vector r is equal to vector v into delta t. Let OC be a line parallel and equal to AB, then vector OC is equal to delta vector r. Therefore, area of the parallelogram OABC is the parallelogram is equal to modulus of vector r cross delta vector r while area of the triangle OAB is equal to 1 by 2 into modulus of vector r cross delta vector r. The area of the triangle OAB represents the area swept by the position vector of the particle in time interval delta t. If the area swept is represented by delta vector a then delta vector A is equal to 1 by 2 into vector R cross delta vector R which is equal to 1 by 2 into R cross vector V into delta T as equation 1. If vector P is linear momentum of the particle then vector V is equal to vector P by M. Now using this value of vector V in equation 1 we have delta vector A equal to 1 by 2 into vector R cross vector P by M into delta T. Now, dividing both sides of this equation by delta T, we get delta vector A by delta T is equal to 1 by 2 M into vector R cross vector P. Since vector R cross vector P is equal to vector L or delta vector A by delta T is equal to vector L by 2M or vector L is equal to 2M into delta vector A by delta T. Here vector L is the angular momentum of the particle about Z axis while delta A by delta t is the area swept by the position vector of the particle and is called 
aerial velocity of the particle. Thus, geometrically, angular momentum of a particle is equal to twice the product of its mass and aerial velocity. The imaginary point in a body where the total weight of the body may be concentrated is termed as center of mass. In a uniform gravitational field, the center of gravity is identical to the center of mass. The center of gravity and center of mass do not always coincide. All the particles constituting a body are attracted downward by the earth and hence we say that a large number of parallel forces directed vertically downward are acting on the body. If m1, m2, m3 up to mn are the masses of the particles constituting the body, then the like parallel forces m1 into vector g, m2 into vector g, m3 into vector g and so on till mn into vector g act on the body in the downward direction. The resultant downward force vector w is called weight of the body. Hence, vector w is equal to m1 into vector g plus m2 into vector g plus m3 into vector g plus so on plus mn into vector g which is equal to m1 plus m2 plus m3 plus so on plus mn whole into vector g. So, vector w is equal to m into vector g where m is equal to m1 plus m2 plus m3 plus so on up to mn is the mass of the whole body. Thus, the point where the weight of the body may be supposed to act is called the center of gravity or the resultant downward force due to gravity on the particles constituting the body may be supposed to act is called the center of gravity of the body. If Mi is the mass of the ith particle of the body whose position vector with respect to its center of gravity is vector Ri then gravitational force on the ith particle is vector fi is equal to mi into vector g. Since the torque acting on the ith particle is vector tau i is equal to vector ri cross vector fi which implies vector tau i is equal to vector ri cross mi into vector g. Therefore, Total gravitational torque acting on the body about its center of gravity is vector tau is equal to summation function of vector tau i over the limits. i is equal to 1 to n which is equal to summation function of vector r i cross m i into vector g. For i is equal to 1 to n or summation function of m i into vector r i cross vector g for i is equal to 1 to n. As the body is in rotational equilibrium, the total gravitational torque on the body about its center of gravity must be 0. That is, vector tau is equal to 0 implying summation function of vector r i cross m i into vector g over the limits i equal to 1 to n equal to 0 or summation function of m i into vector r i cross vector g for i equal to 1 to n is equal to 0. Hence, center of gravity of a body may be defined as that point about which the total gravitational torque on the body is 0 since vector g is non-zero therefore summation of m i into vector r i over i equal to 1 to n is equal to 0 since 
vector r i is the position vector of the ith particle with center of gravity as the origin. Now, if the origin coincides with the center of mass, then summation of m i into vector r i for i equal to 1 to n is equal to 0. Thus, we may conclude that the center of gravity of the body coincides with the center of mass in uniform gravity or gravity free space. Angular momentum a conserved physical quantity hai. Conservation of angular momentum a powerful general law hai jo internal interaction de natije vajo motion de alag alag aspects nu summarize karda hai. It would have been difficult to apply law of conservation of angular momentum for randomly moving particles. For the understanding of this concept, let's watch the visualization carefully. Let an object of circular shape consisting of n particles be attached to a wall supported by a nail. Let an external force be applied on the object, due to which the particles constituting the system are also under the action of force. Hence, a torque due to external force acts on them and rotates object. The internal forces between the particles do not contribute to the total torque on the system. Thus, if d vector L by dt is the rate of change of angular momentum of the system, then the external torque acting on the system is written as vector tau external equal to d vector L by dt. In case external torque on the system is zero, then d vector L by dt is equal to zero which implies that vector L is a constant vector. Now, if vector L1, vector L2, vector L3 and so on up to vector Ln are angular momenta of the different particles of the system about the axis of rotation, then vector L1 plus vector L2 plus vector L3 plus and so on plus vector ln is equal to constant vector. This is the mathematical form of the law of conservation of angular momentum, which states that if no external torque acts on a system, then the total angular momentum of the system always remains conserved. Kyunki angular momentum vector quantity hai. External torque the absence which is the magnitude ate direction unchanged rehne chai dehan. Hun vekhiye ki real world which is the application kis tara kitti jandi hai. During the movement of the planet around the sun, the constant magnitude of the angular momentum vector leads to the constant aerial velocity of the planet and the fixed direction of the angular momentum vector indicates that the plane of the orbital motion of the planet around the sun must remain fixed. Now, if no external forces acts on the system, then both the linear momentum and the angular momentum of the system remain constant. To see vekhya ki sun de duale Kumrae planets the magnitude ate angular momentum constant rende han. Ao is no mathematically analyze karde ha. Consider a planet moving around the sun in elliptical orbit. Let vector r be the position vector of the planet with respect to the sun and vector f be gravitational force on the planet due to the sun. Then the torque acting on the planet due to the force exerted by the sun is given by vector tau is equal to vector r cross vector f. The force on the planet always acts 
along the line joining the centers of the planet and the sun and is directed towards the sun as a result the vectors vector r and vector f are parallel to each other and consequently vector r cross vector f is equal to 0 implying that vector tau is equal to 0 since the relation between the torque acting on the planet and its angular momentum while it moves around the sun under the gravitational field is given by vector tau equal to d vector l by dt. Now vector tau is equal to 0 or d vector l by dt is equal to 0 which in turn means that vector l is a constant vector. Thus, the planet moves under the gravitational force of sun in its orbit with the constant angular momentum. Since the angular momentum of a planet is also given by vector L is equal to 2m into delta vector A by delta T, where m is mass of the planet and delta vector A by delta T is the aerial velocity of the planet since angular momentum of a planet is a constant that is vector l is a constant vector therefore 2m into delta vector a by delta t equal to vector l is also a constant vector this implies that delta vector a by delta t equal to vector l by 2m is a constant vector and this means delta vector a by delta t is equal to constant vector. The constant angular momentum is found to lead to the constant aerial velocity. It is exactly what Kepler predicted about planetary motion in 1602. Means that the line joining the planet to the sun sweeps out equal areas in equal intervals of time. It is known as the Kepler's second law of planetary motion. Vidyarthiyo, ki tusi sochiya hai ki planet jo sun de twale kum reya hai us de orbit te koi prabhav penda hai. Is question de answer lai ik video vekho. You have seen that when a planet moves in its elliptical orbit, its angular momentum vector always remains constant. That is, vector L equal to vector R cross vector P, which is equal to vector R cross M into vector V, which is a constant vector. Here, angular momentum vector L is perpendicular to the plane containing vectors vector r and m into vector v. Therefore, the direction of angular momentum vector l can remain unchanged only if the plane containing the vectors r and m v remains fixed. In other words, the orbit of the planet remains in a fixed plane. Vidyarthiyo, ki tusi sochiya hai? कि ऑर्बिट ते प्लैनेट दी लीनियर स्पीड दी वेरिएशन ते कोई इफेक्ट है इस क्वेश्चन दे आंसर लई ए वीडियो देखो अंडर द इफेक्ट ऑफ द ग्रेविटेशनल फोर्स अ प्लैनेट मूव्स अलोंग द एलिप्टिकल ऑर्बिट अराउंड द सन एज द प्लैनेट कम्स क्लोजर टू द सन इट्स वेलोसिटी इंक्रीजेस ऑन द अदर हैंड एज द प्लैनेट moves away from the sun, its velocity decreases. Thus, the linear speed of the planet is not constant in its orbit. As we know that, if the torque on the planet due to the sun is zero, then the angular momentum of planet is constant, that is, mvr is equal to a constant vector. Now, the distance of the planet from the sun continuously varies along its elliptical path. Therefore, this equation can hold good 
only if the speed of the planet also varies accordingly. Hence, the linear speed of the planet is not constant in its orbit. Ki tusi das sakde ho ki apogee ate perigee te satellite the linear speed which koi variation hundi hai jaan nahi. Is sawaal da jawaab is video vichyo lab de haan. Let a satellite move around the earth in its elliptical orbit. Let A be the point at which the satellite is farthest from earth. This point is termed as apogee of the satellite. Let point B be the point of the shortest distance of the a satellite from earth which is termed as perigee. Now we know that as the a satellite comes near the earth its velocity gets increases while as it moves away from the earth its velocity gets decreases. Thus the speed of a satellite at perigee is greater than that at apogee. Hon to see jaan de ho ki jado satellite अपने एलिप्टिकल ऑर्बिट ते मूव कर दी है ता इस दा एंगुलर मोमेंटम वेक्टर हमेशा कांस्टेंट रहंदा है पर इस दी लीनियर स्पीड बदलदी रहंदी है चलो इस नु मैथमेटिकली समझदे हां लेट वी ए एंड वी बी बी द स्पीड्स ऑफ द सैटेलाइट व्हेन द सैटेलाइट इज एट एपोजी एंड पेरिजी रिस्पेक्टिवली सिंस the satellite moves under the effect of the central force. Its angular momentum is constant of motion. Therefore, m into v a into r maximum is equal to m into v b into r minimum, which implies v a by v b is equal to r minimum by r maximum. Hence, the ratio of the speeds of the satellite at apogee and perigee is equal to the inverse ratio of its distance from the apogee and perigee. Thus, the speed of a satellite at perigee is greater than that at apogee. Part nu khatam karan to pehla, ao, is de mukh anshanu dhara laiye. The turning movement of a particle about the axis of rotation is called the angular momentum of the particle. The center of gravity of a body is the point about which the total gravitational torque on the body is zero. Law of conservation of angular momentum states that if no external torque acts on a system then the total angular momentum of the system always remains conserved. Jinnna asi center of gravity baare janaange, unna hi asi isnu vartan de kabal hoange. Aise conclusion naal, saade aj de paath da samapan kar de haan. Here are some questions and answers for you to verify your learning of this lesson. Question number one, is center of mass and center of gravity same for every object and the answer is no center of mass and center of gravity are not always same for a given object and the next question is what will be the effect on the aerial velocity of the planet which is moving with the constant angular momentum and the answer is Aerial velocity of the planet is always constant. And the next question is, how does the distance of a planet from the sun affects its velocity? And the answer is, the velocity of the planet increases when it is near the sun while it decreases as it moves away from the sun. I am confident that you could understand the answers of all the questions. I hope you enjoyed the lesson and 
are surely looking forward to the next class. Thank you for your attention and see you next time.